You are listening to Section 15, Fables 281 to 300 of 300 Aesop's Fables, translated by George Filer Townsend. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta 281. The She-Goats and Their Beards The She-Goats, having obtained a beard by request to Jupiter, the He-Goats were sorely displeased and made complaint that the females equaled them in dignity. Allow them, said Jupiter, to enjoy an empty honor and to assume the badge of your nobler sex so long as they are not your equals in strength or courage it matters little if those who are inferior to us in merit should be like us in outside appearances two hundred eighty two the camel and the arab an arab camel driver after completing the loading of his camel asked him which he would like best, to go up the hill or down? The poor beast replied, not without a touch of reason, Why do you ask me? Is it that the level way through the desert is closed? 283. A Miller, His Son, and Their Ass A Miller and His Son were driving their ass to a neighboring fair to sell him. They had not gone far when they met with a troop of women collected round a well, talking and laughing. "'Look there!' cried one of them. "'Did you ever see such fellows to be trudging along the road on foot when they might ride?' The old man, hearing this, quickly made his son mount the ass and continued to walk along merrily by his side. Presently they came up to a group of old men in earnest debate. There, said one of them, it proves what I was a-saying. What respect is shown to old age in these days? Do you see that idle lad riding while his old father has to walk? Get down, you young scapegrace, and let the old man rest his weary limbs. Upon this, the old man made his son dismount, and got up himself. In this manner they had not proceeded far, but they met a company of women and children. Why, you lazy old fellow, cried several tongues at once, how can you ride upon the beast? while that poor little lad there can hardly keep pace by the sight of you. The good-natured miller immediately took up his son behind him. They had now almost reached the town. Pray, honest friend, said a citizen, is that ass your own? Yes, replied the old man. Oh, one would not have thought so said the other, by the way you load him. Why, you two fellows are better able to carry the poor beast than he, you. Anything to please you, said the old man. We can but try. So, alighting with his son, they tied the legs of the ass together, and, with the help of a pole, endeavored to carry him on their shoulders over a bridge near the entrance to the town. This entertaining sight brought the people in crowds to laugh at it, until the ass, not liking the noise, or the strange handling that he was subject to, broke the cords that bound him, and, tumbling off the pole, fell into the river. Upon this, the old man, vexed and ashamed, made the best out of his way home again, convinced that by endeavoring to please everybody, he had pleased nobody, and lost his ass in the bargain. 
284. The Crow and the Sheep A troublesome crow seated herself on the back of a sheep. The sheep, much against his will, carried her backward and forward for a long time, and at last said, If you had treated a dog in this way, you would have had your deserts from his sharp teeth. To this the crow replied, I despise the weak and yield to the strong. I know whom I may bully and whom I must flatter, and I thus prolong my life to a good old age. 285. The Fox and the Bramble The fox was mounting a hedge when he lost his footing and caught hold of a bramble to save himself. Having pricked and grievously torn the soles of his feet, he accused the bramble, because, when he had fled to her for assistance, she had used him worse than the hedge itself. The bramble, interrupting him, said, But you really must have been out of your senses to fasten yourself on me, who am myself always accustomed to fasten upon others. 286. The Wolf and the Lion The wolf, having stolen a lamb from the fold, was carrying him off to his lair. A lion met them in the path, and, seizing the lamb, took it from him. Standing at a safe distance, the wolf exclaimed, You have unrighteously taken that which was mine from me. To which the lion jeeringly replied, It was righteously yours, eh? The gift of a friend? 287. The Dog and the Oyster A dog, used to eating eggs, saw an oyster, and, opening his mouth to its widest extent, swallowed it down with the utmost relish supposing it to be an egg. Soon afterwards, suffering great pain in his stomach, he said, I deserve all this torment for my folly in thinking that everything round must be an egg. They who act without sufficient thought will often fall into unsuspected danger. 288 the ant and the dove an ant went to the bank of a river to quench its thirst and being carried away by the rush of the stream was on the point of drowning a dove sitting on a tree overhanging the water plucked a leaf and let it fall into the stream close to her the ant climbed on to it and floated in safety to the bank Shortly afterwards, a bird-catcher came and stood under the tree, and laid his lime twigs for the dove, which sat in the branches. The ant, perceiving his design, stung him in the foot. In pain, the bird-catcher threw down the twigs, and the noise made the dove take wing. 289 the partridge and the fowler a fowler caught a partridge and was about to kill it the partridge earnestly begged him to spare his life saying pray master permit me to live and i will entice many partridges to you in recompense for your mercy to me the fowler replied i shall now with less scruple Take your life, for you are willing to save it at the cost of betraying your friends and relations. 290. The Flea and the Man A man, very much annoyed by the flea, caught him at last, and said, Who are you who dare to feed on my limbs, and to cost me so much trouble in catching you? 
The flea replied, Oh, my dear sir, pray spare my life and destroy me not, for I cannot possibly do you much harm. The man, laughing, replied, Now you shall certainly die by mine own hands, for no evil, whether it be small or large, ought to be tolerated. 291. The Thieves and the Cock Some thieves broke into a house and found nothing but a cock, whom they stole, and got off as fast as they could. Upon arriving at home, they prepared to kill the cock, who thus pleaded for his life. Pray, spare me. I am very serviceable to men. I wake them up in the night to their work. That is the very reason why we must the more kill you, they replied. For when you wake your neighbors, you entirely put an end to our business. The safeguards of virtue are hateful to those with evil intentions. 292. The Dog and the Cook A rich man gave a great feast to which he invited many friends and acquaintances. His dog availed himself of the occasion to invite a stranger dog, a friend of his, saying, My master gives a feast, and there is always much food remaining. Come and sup with me tonight. The dog, thus invited, went at the hour appointed, and, seeing the preparations for so grand an entertainment, said in the joy of his heart, How glad I am that I came! I do not often get such a chance as this. I will take care and eat enough to last me both today and tomorrow. While he was thus congratulating himself and wagging his tail to convey his pleasure to his friend, the cook saw him moving about among his dishes, and, seizing him by his fore and hind paws, bundled him, without ceremony, out the window. He fell with force upon the ground, and limped away, howling dreadfully. His yelling soon attracted other street dogs, who came up to him and inquired how he had enjoyed his supper. He replied, why, to tell you the truth, I drank so much wine that I remember nothing. I do not know how I got out of the house. 293. The Travelers and the Plane Tree Two travelers, worn out by the heat of the summer's sun, laid themselves down at noon under the white spreading branches of a plane tree. As they rested under its shade, one of the travelers said to the other, What a singularly useless tree is the plane! It bears no fruit, and is not of the least service to man. The plane tree interrupted him, said, You ungrateful fellows! Do you, while receiving benefits from me and resting under my shade, dare to describe me as useless and unprofitable? Some men underrate their best blessings. 294. The Hares and the Frogs The Hares, oppressed by their own exceeding timidity, and weary of the perpetual alarm to which they were exposed, with one accord, determined to put an end to themselves and their troubles, by jumping from a lofty precipice into a deep lake below. As they scampered off in large numbers to carry out their resolve, the frogs, lying on the banks of the lake, heard the noise of their feet, and rushed helter-skelter to the deep water for safety. On seeing the rapid disappearance of the frogs, one of the hares cried out to his companions, Stay, my friends, do not do as you intended, for now you see that there are creatures who are still more timid than ourselves. 
295. The Lion, Jupiter, and the Elephant The Lion wearied Jupiter with his frequent complaints. Is it true, O Jupiter, he said, that I am gigantic in strength, handsome in shape, and powerful in attack? I have jaws well provided with teeth, and feet furnished with claws, and I lord it over all the beasts of the forest. And what a disgrace it is that being such as I am, I should be frightened by the crowing of a cock. Jupiter replied, Why do you blame me without a cause? I have given you all the attributes which I possess myself, and your courage never fails you, except in this one instance. On hearing this, the lion groaned and lamented very much, and, reproaching himself with his cowardice, wished that he might die. As these thoughts passed through his mind, he met an elephant, and came close to hold a conversation with him. After a time, he observed that the elephant shook his ears very often, and he inquired what was the matter and why his ears moved with such a tremor every now and then. Just at that moment, a gnat settled on the head of the elephant, and he replied, Do you see that little buzzing insect? If it enters my ear, my fate is sealed. I should die presently. The lion said, Well, since so huge a beast is afraid of a tiny gnat, I will no more complain, nor wish myself dead. I find myself, even as I am, better off than the elephant. 296. The Lamb and the wolf. A wolf pursued a lamb, which fled for refuge to a certain temple. The wolf called out to him and said, The priest will slay you in sacrifice if he should catch you. On which the lamb replied, It would be better for me to be sacrificed in the temple than to be eaten by you. 297 the rich man and the tanner a rich man lived near a tanner and not being able to bear the unpleasant smell of the tan yard he pressed his neighbor to go away the tanner put off his departure from time to time saying that he would leave soon but as he still continued to stay as time went on the rich man became accustomed to the smell and feeling no manner of inconvenience made no further complaints two hundred ninety eight the shipwrecked man and the sea a shipwrecked man having been cast upon a certain shore slept after his buffetings with the deep after a while he awoke and looking upon the sea loaded it with reproaches He argued that it enticed men with the calmness of its looks, but when it had induced them to plow its waters, it grew rough and destroyed them. The sea, assuming the form of a woman, replied to him, Blame not me, my good sir, but the winds, for I am by my own nature as calm and firm, even as this earth. But the winds suddenly falling on me create these waves and lash me into fury. 299. The Mules and the Robbers Two mules, well laden with packs, were trudging along. One carried panniers filled with money, the other sacks weighted with grain. The mule carrying the treasure walked with its head erect, as if conscious of the value of his burden, and tossed up and down the clear-toned bells fastened to his neck. His companion followed with quiet and easy step. All of a sudden, robbers rushed upon them from their hiding-places, and in the scuffle with their owners, 
wounded with a sword a mule carrying the treasure, which they greedily seized while taking no notice of the grain. The mule, which had been robbed and wounded, bewailed his misfortunes. The other replied, I am indeed glad that I was thought so little of, for I have lost nothing, nor am I hurt with any wound. 300. The Viper and the File A lion, entering the workshop of a smith, sought from the tools the means of satisfying his hunger. He more particularly addressed himself to a file, and asked of him the favor of a meal. The file replied, You must indeed be a simple-minded fellow if you expect to get anything from me, who am accustomed to take from everyone, and never to give anything in return. End of section 15